Hello and welcome to Faithfully Stampin' with Jennifer Helm. I am Jennifer Helm, the Faithful Stamper and Independent Demonstrator with Stampin' Up! Today I have for you a super simple sketch card. You can see here there's nothing flashy, no fun folds. So if you're looking for a fancy fun fold, this isn't the video for you. The sole purpose of this card is to be quick and simple and use up scraps of cardstock and designer series paper. The reason I went with this quick and simple design was because I needed a card in a hurry and I really didn't want to have to drag out instructions and think about fun folds and things like that. So I just literally needed a quick and easy card. So this is what I came up with. So I'm going to teach you how to make it. Very few supplies needed and if you're like me and you have buckets full of little pieces of designer series paper that you can't bear to put in the recycle bin, this will help you get rid of some of those. So to start, you need a card base. It can be either style of card base, but this one is eight and a half by five and a half, scored down the middle of the long side at four and a quarter. And this is Blushing Bride cardstock that I'm using here tonight. All my colors came directly from the designer series paper that I'm going to use, which I'll talk about a little bit later. Next up, I have a cardstock layer that is five and a quarter by four. Now, this can be any number of things. I used Pool Party and I embossed it. This is the Painted Texture Embossing Folder, which is one of my favorites. It's a very subtle design. It can be masculine or feminine. But if you're thinking, I don't have one of those fancy embossing machines, let me know, I can help you with that. But you're not tied to an embossed piece of paper, so don't worry. You could use a plain piece of cardstock, you could use designer series paper, or you could take one of my favorite tricks and take a plain piece of cardstock, Pool Party for example, take Pool Party ink and some kind of stamp, maybe floral or leafy, and just stamp tone on tone and that'll give you a little bit of depth and dimension without having the embossed factor to it. So you're not stuck if you don't have any embossing folders. No special glue required for this project. I'm using our stamp and seal. And I will say that I am going to use a little bit extra because when I put embossed panels on my projects, I like to make sure they're not gonna pull off. Sometimes I feel like they don't get as great of a stick to the card front, just because of the, the little added texture that that beautiful embossing gives. So I just like to make sure it's not going anywhere. And so this just gets layered right on the card front with a nice press down, okay? And this will set to the side for a minute. Next up, we're just going to do some layering with pieces of cardstock and designer series paper. So this piece of cardstock is Blushing Bride, three inches by two and a quarter. What I did for this card was all my layering pieces of cardstock are the same color as my card base. Now you're welcome to mix and match if you want, totally up to you, but for simplicity's sake and to move faster, I just went with Blushing Bride to keep that theme going. So three by two and a quarter here. And then what I'm going to do is grab a piece of designer series paper that is two and three quarters of an inch wide by two inches tall. And if you're not familiar with what DSP is, that's designer series paper. That's what we call this beautiful printed paper that we have. Sometimes I forget that not everybody's familiar with the lingo. So this particular designer series paper is a piece from our Hostess exclusive pack. So in order to secure this beautiful paper, and there's a whole bunch of different patterns. You do have to host a party of some kind. You could host a Facebook party if you're in my area, and we could do a live demonstration in person. You can also do a catalog show where you just hand catalogs out to your friends and family, or if you're anything like me, you can probably come up with $150 in product all by yourself, and that qualifies you for a party. And then in the back of the book, we have this beautiful page that features the designer series paper here at the top. And so this is the Design a Daydream pack of designer series paper. One of the reasons I love it is because of the wide variety. It is 12 sheets, two pages of um, six double-sided designs. So nice very useful pack of paper. And there's also some host exclusive stamp sets. But anyway, enough about that. 
If you'd like a paper catalog, be sure to let me know. I'm happy to send you one if you don't have a demonstrator you're working with, and you can always check me out online. All right, back to the card. So again, just layering these pieces. Nice simple border around these. This I'm going to put on the card flat. I could pop it with dimensionals, but I opted to leave it flat on the card with my persnickety adhesive. <laughs> there we go. It's camera shy, it really is. It works all the time, except when I'm live on camera. Now, <clears throat> you can change up the layout if you want. You can put your this panel to the left or you can put it towards the right. And let's see, I think I'm gonna go, this paper has flowers that go either way, but I think I'm gonna put them this way. And I'm just gonna line up the edge of this panel with the edge of my pool party panel to give that a little extra pink border there. Now next up in the layering department, I have a narrow strip of cardstock. This is 5 eighths of an inch tall by four inches wide. Again, Blushing Bride. And to this piece, I am going to layer a piece of designer series paper, same print, that is half an inch tall by four inches wide. So there's not going to be a border on the ends, just to the top and the bottom. And now I'm gonna grab my favorite tool for keeping my work place or my work table clean, which is my silicone craft mat. It's great if you might be getting a little out of control with your glue. And these narrow strips can sometimes be hard to keep my adhesive nice and tidy on. But that way I can wash this off very easily and not have mucked up my work surface. So this just gets centered top to bottom lined up end to end like so. Now you can glue this flat on the card or pop it with dimensionals and that is what I'm going to do here. The key to using your dimensionals is make sure you have even distribution. You wouldn't want your cardstock strip here to sag in the middle once it's been manhandled through the postal system. They are wonderful, the postal workers, but Sometimes those machines are a little rough on our cards, right? So just make sure you put dimensionals all the way across, evenly anyway, maybe not all the way across, but evenly spaced, and that way your card strip will stay nice and tidy on your card. Okay, last, as far as layering, we're going to layer and stamp. So I have a piece of cardstock that is two and a quarter by one. This is gonna fit my stamp perfectly. So if you have a longer sentiment that you want to use, just adjust the measurements on your cardstock. Now I'm going to layer a piece of basic white here that is two and an eighth of an inch by seven eighths of an inch. So very narrow border around this. I just like the look of the narrow border better than a wider one for this particular piece. So I have a stamp from the Celebrating You stamp set. I needed some anniversary cards, so you're gonna see a theme here in the samples tonight. I'm using Blackberry Bliss ink, which I'm pulling out of my designer series paper. And so this is just gonna be stamped here. I think that looks good. Now, this would look perfectly fine layered just like this and put on my project. However, I wanted to kind of soften up the stark white of the cardstock here. So what I'm going to do is just grab a piece of scrap paper and some pool party ink. And then I have a stamp from the Happiness Abounds stamp set that's just a leafy floral, nothing too, too bright and flashy, just kind of subtle. And I'm going to stamp right over top of my image. Normally I would grab my stamp and pierce mat, but for just these two little stamps, I'm risking it because that was a photopolymer stamp. Normally I'd grab a little cushion. And see, that just helps kind of soften that look and just made me happy. So this gets layered together.
And then this piece I am going to pop on dimensionals. You could really glue everything flat on the card or pop it all with dimensionals. It is totally up to you. And the other thing that is up to you is placement on this particular piece. If you like it in the middle, you could put it in the middle or you can put it down here. Actually, I'm going to I'm gonna break my rule. On most of the cards that I made earlier, I did not like this piece in the middle here like this, but I like it there on this, the way the designer series paper works. You can see here that I did it slightly different. So both ways look fine, so it's totally up to you. Now to finish this one off really quick, all I'm going to do is grab some of our iridescent rhinestone basic jewels just for a little subtle color and a little tip that I wanted to share is if you have packs of embellishments like this I used to always forever be um, flipping open the flap pulling my embellishments out the top and then something would get stuck and they would just be a mess a little tip that I learned a couple years ago from a demonstrator friend is when you get your packet of embellishments instead of either cutting off the top or just pulling open that flap every time you want to use them just slit it right here along the side with your scissors and then you can just slide them out and slide them back in again just a little tip in case you're interested in that little little handy idea so I'm gonna add some of these gems here. Definitely need to order another package of these. Obviously you don't have to add bling if you don't want. I swear, sometimes I have the most trouble figuring out where I wanna put gems on cards. And I think I'm gonna go with that for today. All right, so there is our quick and simple sketch card design. So you can see, once you have a general idea of what paper and color of cardstock you want to use, you could roll through and make a bunch of these at the same time and churn out cards quickly. I made all these samples over the course of the day today, um, doing a lot of things in between, but they still came together very, very quickly. So here are some more samples. This is the only other card where I put the sentiment here on the middle. But same concept, embossed back panel and then designer series paper and a little bling. But you can mix and match. And this card is reversed from this card. So I just went left instead of right on that one. Now this card, I used designer series paper for my background. This is more from that hostess set. And it, I just really thought these pieces worked together. And instead of a rectangular piece, I used a punch for my sentiment and added some different bling. So you have lots of room for creativity here. I always say I'm all about the options. Now stepping away from anniversary cards for a moment, this is a get well card. I really like these kites on this designer series paper, but I thought rather than just a regular punch, why not pull in the clouds? Kites fly in the sky and so do clouds. So here's just a quick simple get well card. And then you are not tied to having your sentiment on something small here in the middle of the card if you prefer. You can mix it up a little bit. You could use cardstock down here at the bottom. Um, I use designer series paper here and just stamp directly on that designer series paper. But another idea is to use cardstock and stamp on it and then run it through your embossing machine if you have one. That would be a different look as well. And then here I just really featured the designer series paper and opted for a die cut there in, instead of my sentiment somewhere here on the card. And it looks lovely. And then last but not least, I think this is my favorite card. You can dress these cards up as much as you want. You can keep them plain and simple, just the cardstock and designer series paper, or you can really kind of dress it up a little bit. This is Mint Macaron and Pool Party, which is a combination I don't know that I would have used, except I pulled it out of the designer series paper. I embossed these two pieces here, went with the designer series paper in the back, and then I took my Stampin' Blends in Dark Pool Party, added some color to our basic pearls, and just added them for a subtle little touch, and I also added some vellum leaves here with a punch. So. I could have even added an extra layer of cardstock if I wanted to really kind of dress this up. So this simple design can be as simple or as ornate as you want it to be depending on how much time you want to play with it. So I hope you enjoyed this super simple sketch card. 
I know it's not anything fancy, but sometimes we don't need fancy. Sometimes we just need quick and super simple, right? I hope you enjoyed learning how to make that. If you have not already, I'd love it if you would subscribe to this YouTube channel. I typically post videos here twice a week. You can also follow me over on Facebook where I do Facebook Live videos and share other projects and techniques over there. You can find me there as The Faithful Stamper. Thank you so much for watching. Take care and happy crafting.